what do you do? My name is Tatiana Mento. I'm currently a student at Megar Average College, and I'm also a photography and videography student at MIB. Cut, perfect. The first thing I can say about the culture of Brownsville is the loyalty. So people here who are from Brownsville, they're proud that they're from Brownsville. The culture of Brownsville is quite unique. I would describe the culture of Brownsville as kind of homey, in a sense, to say that you can go to the corner store and say you don't, you're don't, you sure on cash. I can the corner store be like, all right, here, I got you, just come back tomorrow. Brownsville is, is, is really diverse culturally. It's uniquely set apart, I'll say that. Even with everything going around, like how everything else is changing, like Brownsville, it's still Brownsville after all this time. So it's kind of like um, people who have the ability to help, they're trying to help whoever they can. And that's really just like the whole kind of support system that was created here, like the ecosystem of Brownsville. You know, I can tell you my Brownsville plan, but I don't think y'all want that in that camera, you know? <laughs> Not really, but I'm in the three quarter and I know some guys that is from Brownsville. I mean, oh, I heard that they do a lot of work as far as helping, trying to help in the community and stuff like that. Nah, I'm not. What is the Brownsville plan? I've definitely seen evidence of it. No, I haven't heard nothing about that. No. No, I don't think I know about that. My name is Casa Balai, and I am the co-director for United for Brownsville. Uh, my name is Terrell, and I am a photographer down at MIB. So, my name is Brittany Bellinger, and I'm the program manager at Made in Brownsville. Hello, uh, my name is Gerard Allison. I'm a photographer here at MIB and a streetwear designer when I'm not here. Well, my name is Deshaun, the bigger army. Um, I work for Brownsville and Violence Out. My name is Kanisha Chen. I work for Brownsville and Violence Out as the job and education specialist. Well, my name is Torian Lewis, and I'm the community engagement specialist for the Brownsville Partnership. Favorite memories in Brownsville. Um, one of them is buying my prom dress on Pickin Avenue. No, there's a lot of experiences. It's actually too many to count from day to day. I would say the favorite memory I've had in Brownsville was actually very recently. I actually lived in Brownsville for 28 out of my 42 years of life. <laughs> Ooh, favorite memory I would say, I used to go to the block parties in like 2010. I grew up in Riverdale. Well, they call it Riverdale. They do. So my family decided that Pickin was the new Fulton Mall and we would come down to buy everything all the time. We taped a round table session with a group of families we've been working with. I will say that the Brownsville that I live in now is completely different from the Brownsville I grew up in. We used to party until like two in the morning. She came out there and played basketball with me when I was little. She put the moves on me, she actually crossed me up. Fats chasing me, crackheads chasing me, Cars chasing me, like, it's a lot of people, like, getting chased around up in here. A shooting tonight in Brownsville left one man dead and two others hurt. Police say a 20-year-old man was shot in the leg after an argument with Somerville. Also, police arrested Osiel Cardenas Jr. at a Brownsville bar on Tuesday. The NYPD just released video of two men wanted for shooting two people in Brooklyn. Three children were killed in their Brownsville home. Brownsville police also looking for several people. They say stabbed the man at his apartment yesterday.
So I am super familiar with gentrification. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was introduced to the concept of urban planning, uh, which is kind of like the improvement of urban um, environments or cities. And so from just kind of anyone who's introduced to urban planning, you're introduced to gentrification. You're helping people, white people, you know, who can't afford Manhattan, then it's definitely helping them. For, but for the people who've lived here for five plus years, it's not helping nobody to push them out of their own neighborhood. One of the biggest pressing issues in Brownsville right now is that gentrification is quickly closing in on us. So like East New York has begun to gentrify, Crown Heights, Canarsie, and Bed-Stuy, and Brownsville is kind of like in the middle of that. I don't really like it. I feel like uh, a lot of these foreigners or uh, people who have no idea what the city, what New York, what Brooklyn is really about. They come in and they basically try and reconstruct Brownsville into what they want it to be. And it don't work like that. It don't work like that. I would say to keep it short, if it's to better the community and the lives of the people that's been struggling in the communities, I would say I'm for it. But as of right now, gentrification is not bettering anybody but those that are coming in and changing the communities. Um, you're introduced to displacement. You're introduced to like how cities change over time. We know it's coming. And residents are afraid that they're going to be displaced. They're trying to move us out because, you know, we the poor people. They, they feel like we don't really got it like that. So all the people that's coming in with the money and all that, that's what they're trying to, you know, keep around. Like, they're really not trying to... I don't really think it's going to help us at the end of the day. Well, what I say to people when they ask what the Brownsville yes. plan is, I say it's a plan to ensure that the city no longer forgets about Brownsville. So the Brownsville plan is essentially a um, plan to reconstruct Brownsville, put together by the HPD of New York City. They want to bring more arts and culture to the community of Brownsville, and they want to bring more health areas to implement health. So for me, the Brownsville plan is a plan to make sure that the people of Brownsville have a say in what happens in this community. And essentially, they're funneling over $50 million to renovate these different spaces. So they have plans on filling up vacant spaces all around Brownsville, renovating parks, and also adding businesses, um, as well as the supporting the businesses that are here already. I have heard that there's going to be lots of money funneled into the community. Um, I have heard that the Brownsville plan includes the needs of the members of the community. I've heard that they have, do they have done that due diligence. It's a plan to improve our community. The Brownsville plan wants to make sure that everyone in Brownsville is being included in this, um, this renovation and this reconstruction. It's supposed to happen. This is what it's supposed to be. I'm glad to see it and be part of it, and uh, I can't wait to see it grow. Brownsville. 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 Brownsville.